a successful VST sequencer, but in its simpler, cheaper, still versatile version with my signature presets. What else? Today, guys, I'm presenting you Second Light, the new version of Alex Kidd's sequencer Second, and I'll show you how I built my signature presets that you will find in the VST presets collection. So a while ago I reviewed Second, the first VST sequencer by Alex Kidd. Alex Kidd is very well known for his Max for Live sequencers, but Max for Live devices are working only on Ableton. So he embarked on the enterprise of building a VST plugin, so something that could work on any DAW. Second is a sequencer that is packed with features and a lot of producers are able to take the advantages also of all of these features but wisely Alex thought about creating something that was a little bit more compressed so with less features but just the key ones that you need to build your sequences so let's have a look at what this new second light is what are the features what are the differences compared to the second big brother and uh, let's build some presets that will be included in the collection when the plugin will be released well actually if you're watching this video the plugin is already out and you can have it by clicking on the link in the description so let's have a look at second light first so this is the sequencer it's pretty simple so first of all we have the the gate line to decide which step is on which step is off the hold line that is needed when you want to keep the note pressed then the pitch line velocity cc is for controlling midi parameters and modulating them and then the global settings so clock length of the notes you just have the overall length of the notes you can't decide the length of the single steps swing octave transpose I mean, these are pretty straightforward. Then for every line, we have the randomizer, the number of steps that we want to activate, and the randomize functions. So how much we want to randomize with the density, what is the default value? For example, on the pitch line, we can decide the highest value, the lowest value, and the default value. So if we reset, for example, to B1, it will set B1 on all of the steps. So before starting to play around with second light, I wanna see what are the differences with the second full version. So at first they might appear very similar. The only difference that jumps out is the probability AB and the pitch B. So on second full version, you could have two pitches along the sequence and assign a probability to play one pitch or the other for the same step. On second full version, we have much more that you can toggle by pressing on these um, buttons here. On the upper part we can see we had the length for each step and the chance of each step being played. Then if we move down here we could also select the octave for each step, the transpose, then velocity is also on second light. And then on the MIDI CC side we could have up to three different MIDI parameters to control. Everything else is the same. So if you think that you don't need all of these options, because having a lot of options sometimes is overwhelming and it doesn't get you to the point, well, I think Second Light is a good trade-off and of course it's cheaper, so depends also on your budget. All right, so I have Second Light on a MIDI channel. On another channel, I have the instrument I wanna play with the sequencer. We will have to set that channel to receive MIDI from second there we go and also set second light also on the second drop down menu let's set also the channel to in to receive MIDI from second and now should be able to hear something so this is the default preset that we have when we open Second Light. So the first preset that I'm building is a preset that I consider a starter for building a baseline. Because if we start from the default preset of Second, might, we might set the scale as well. For example, this track I'm working on is in F minor. And then if we rely on randomizing, 
uh, the parameters, what we achieve sometimes is something that is not that musical because of course randomization will assign random notes that are in the scale but they might not play that much the root note and so the bass line wouldn't sound that good. So I will set some parameters that will help you to achieve something that is more musical, more simpler to hear. So first of all I've set my scale, so F minor. Secondly I'm going on these three dots, what I'm doing is setting the default value to F1 instead of C1. So now if I play, press reset, it will move everything to F1. Let's check how it sounds. There we go. And the second thing is that, okay, the low value, I don't want it to be C0. C0 is too low. I don't even want it to be F0 because F0 is still too low because if I play that, Let's give it a check. Okay, definitely too low. So let's say the first note of the scale, we want it to be a C1. Alright, so it doesn't have to be F1. We might want the bass line to go also below the root note of our scale, but we don't want it to go too low. And on the high value, well, A sharp 3 is definitely too, low, too high. So we could set F2 so that the bass line moves up one octave, the maximum, or maybe if we want, G2 or G sharp 2, but I wouldn't go more than that because this is a preset that I'm building, I'm building for a bass line. The last thing that I'm going to fix for the pitch is the density. So density is how much you're going to randomize the sequence when you press the randomizing button. We don't want to fully randomize. So if we start from the, from the default setting where all the notes are set to F, when I press randomize, I want to change just some of those, no those notes, not all of them. So let's put this to around 30%. So now if I randomize, now we have some randomization. So you can see that now the notes are starting to make sense together. I also want to set some uh, hold on some of the notes. So one thing that I'm noticing right now is that, for example, G sharp 2 is definitely a too high note for a bass line. So I will go back inside here and I will take this down to F2. I don't want to go above F2. So let's reset this and let's try a new sequence. There we go. So this is a nice sequence and as you could see it started from very simple settings but set in the right way. So let's go back, let's reset this, let's reset this and let's just and let's reset this. But we will keep this with these settings which I think are cool. And this will be my first preset. So if you want to start a new bass line, just select this bass starter distilled noise preset. This is set to F minor, which is one of my favorite scales, but of course you can set it to another scale, for example E minor. Then you go back here, you select E1 as the default value, you press reset, and then again you could set this to E minor E2 so that you know that it's not going above that and maybe this to E1 or to B0 so just stay pretty close to the root note on the lower value you move down a little bit but not too much otherwise it's a too low note distill noise baseline starter save the same thing we could do if we want to build a melody so what should change in that in that case well we should just move everything up a little bit we set F3 as the default value, let's try to start from there, and then we select F2 as the lower one and A sharp 3 as the upper one. I, I just have to check before. 
So this might be a fairly good uh, a pitch to start from, but since I'm seeing here that the highest value that I can achieve is A sharp three, it would mean just few semitones upper. So I think my melody, I would like to be able to go even higher than that. So what we will do is setting the octave to plus one. Okay, so my default value, I take it down to F2. I take down the low value to C2, let's say, and the highest one to a F3. So that's the highest one that I can achieve. And let's randomize a bit. Distilled noise melody starter. Boom, that's my second, second light preset. Now let's uh, try to be a little bit more creative. I liked the sequence that we achieved a minute ago. So let's go back to that. Let's try to change also the velocity a little bit because this sound that I'm using is velocity sensitive. So let's give it a full randomization. Then it depends if your synth has a more open filter when you are in the upper range of the velocity and you like, you like it to be more open, you can go inside here and set the range. So even if your high value and low value are set zero to 127, you can still, you know, control. See? This is a value that doesn't depend on the sequence. The sequence is linked to these values, but the actual value that goes out is what you set here. So if you set like this, it means that it will be what is in the sequence. If you set it like this, it means that it will follow the sequence, but then narrow the values down to this range that you're setting here. Melody one. So now I've set the synth to work in legato mode, so it will glide between the notes just when they are legato and it's monophonic. So now the effect is a little bit different. If I move this up. See? Now just these two notes, since I've set the hold on this, are legato. Let's try to take down one octave. And then we can transform this in a bass line. So I want to move from this preset to a baseline preset. Let's go. Yeah, I think we have it. Right, I also had to include this uh, preset which I call Baseline Ideas Generator. Basically, I changed the advanced mode here instead of clock, so basically it moves through all of the gate, I changed it to gate. So the gate advanced mode means that it moves on each pitch step when the gate encounters a gate that is on, so you can see. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like a polyrhythm because I have a, not a four or eight number of gates, but I have six gates on. You can actually record this and then uh, elaborate it as you prefer. So it can give you some idea. But yeah, the point here is starting from setting, you know, the starter here in a way that the result you will have will be musical. So I think my favorite presets are definitely the melody starter, the bassline starter. I know they seem like too simple, but this is the starting point for a great result. Guys, I hope you liked this video, you got inspired. Second Light is out by the moment you're seeing this video. you find the link in the description. If you appreciated this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.